All right, uh, welcome everybody to a special uh, webinar presentation on secrets to video analysis in the AFL football circles. Uh, a, we're, I guess, got the pleasure today to uh, introduce a guy called Glenn Murdoch from Darkfish TV. Uh, Glenn, do you want to maybe just quickly start off by explaining your background? Uh, yeah, thanks, Lenny, and hello to everyone. I, uh, I guess, my background is sports science. I did a, uh, I did a sports science degree back in the nineties. Uh, followed the path of a phys ed teacher and during the course of uh, I've actually been a teacher in the UK I uh, discovered the use of video in my teaching. Um, I've also coached at uh, national level and was a skills coach at, uh, at international level with the Australian girls and I, I guess I came from a situation in about 2000 where I didn't know how to turn a computer on to where we are now, where I, um, I guess I've, uh, I've helped about a thousand schools and hundreds of clubs incorporate this into their learning. So that's how I got to here. Beautiful. Uh, now also on the call, we've got uh, obviously the, the original founder of Coach AFL, uh, Dave Jono Johnson. You there, Jono? Yeah. G'day, Lenny. How are you? How are you, Glenn? Going well, David. Good to have you on the call. Uh, and of course, then we've got um, Simon Goosey uh, from uh, the Mighty Franks and Dolphins in the VFL. How are you going there, Simon? Yeah, good, thanks, Lenny. Beautiful. So uh, how the call's pretty much going to work out today is Glenn's going to run just a quick presentation on how video analysis is used in the AFL today and how clubs can pretty much use it in their own uh, club systems uh, with Jono and Simon providing special comments, I guess, from their uh, specialist coaching uh, points of view. So what I'll do, Glenn, is I'll handball it to you, mate, and fire away. Beautiful. And, uh, of course, gents, at any stage, jump in and, and ask any questions that you've got. You are all off mute, so uh, I can hear you all. So, uh, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll move along. So the first thing that I wanted to do is go through the intentions for our presentation. Obviously, there's, there's a whole lot of coaches that are listening to this call. And... Um, what I wanted to do is I want to go through what video analysis is and how it works and how it can be used in coaching all the way from the AFL level down to under nines. Why professional athletes and coaches use video analysis and I guess we're lucky in that we've got Jono and Goose on the call and they can help us with that. How video analysis is used in the AFL and how to simplify video analysis um, and in particular by simplifying it with the use of Dartfish software. So the, the beginnings of all of this are that there are nine real keys to unlocking great video analysis use. And I want to spend five minutes just going through these because they're absolutely key. The first one is that you must build trust with your athletes. So many times I see performance analysis used as a stick to beat, to, to beat players with and it's not used as a carrot. And analysis for me, it's like any coaching tool. If you're trying to improve your players, then there's a time and a place where you need to highlight mistakes. But if you're constantly using analysis to criticize, you just simply will not get the buy-in from the players that you're after. The thing to remember is that the analysis that you use, it's a learning tool and it needs to be used with constructive criticism and positive reinforcement. And that's the biggest mistake I see people make when they're using video analysis. Um, with regard to number two, I, I, and I've, I've written here presentation, presentation, presentation. It's so important to work hard on your presentation skills, just like anything else. If the information gets presented badly, then the message gets lost. So spend a little bit of time making sure your presentation's tight, making sure that you know how to present. Um, and, and I don't mean that as far as the talking side of things, but just knowing which button to click and, and making sure that you do present well. If there's a big point that has to stand out, then that's what you want to get across to the players. Make sure that you don't lose the players in a sea of information that they don't need. They can always come to you later on for the finite detail. Technical, tactical, physical, and mental, I've written as number three. It's important that, you know, as far as the analysis goes, you need to do all four if you can. I'm sure most guys that are doing some kind of analysis have been asked to make motivational movies, for example. 
Um, you know, they're, they're something we don't think about, but it's part of the mental side of what you might need to do. Um, body language. Have you gone out and, and, and looked at body language on the field? And have you mentioned that? Have you taken a camera or will you take a camera to training? And this is the newest side of what's happening with the AFL. Um, and I will pause for questions, guys, at the end of these nine, just to, to let you know as well. Um, the other thing is, do you, do you look at video or have you used a video on yourself as a coach? What are your presentations at quarter time, half time, three quarter time like? What's your message? Are you getting your message across? Are you getting lost in the game? Uh, number four there, not everything that counts can be counted. And uh, this is key. There's a temptation to think that you can measure everything. Now, while I'd like to believe that as, a, as an analyst myself, the, re- the reality is it's not true. There are some sports that lend themselves to lots of prediction and lots of precise analysis and some that don't. AFL, for me, has a really nice balance of objective and subjective. So measure what you can, but be aware that some things just can't be counted. Um, Number five, the analytics will never replace decision-making. And I, I love that old saying, lies, damn lies, and statistics. Keep in mind that lots of old school coaches, and there might be some listening to this, will have nothing to do with uh, counting anything, all right? But I think there are always things that can be counted and can be used in analysis, in particular video analysis. Stats on their own can lie. Stats with video almost never do. I'll just say that again. Stats on their own can lie, but stats with video almost never do. Listen to your players, listen to what they're saying with regard to the subjective parts of the statistic gathering. Analysis doesn't always tell the full story, but it's pretty hard to hide um, what's really going on when you've actually got video with stats. Uh, Number six I've got there, don't just collect the stats, make a difference. And I, I just can't stress this highly enough. I don't know how many times I've been shown coaches who have pages and pages and pages of information on a game... And while the information is interesting, I often wonder whether or not that information is actually useful. There's no point collecting information for the sake of it. You've got to start from a point of view, and it's, and it's starting with the end in mind. What is it that I'm really wanting to tell the story of with this information? And that'll help you to only collect stuff that is important to you. And I know Simon, when we chat with him, is going to give us a really good idea about what he did in, uh, it, well, certainly at VFL level now, but back in the days when he was in uh, local footy and, and why he did it. It's important that you start with the end in mind. Remember the learning styles of your players, and I'm going to emphasize this a little bit more. Your players will generally be either auditory, visual, kinesthetic, or they might be auditory digital. It's important that you understand that you've got to cater for all three types when you present your information. Video is only one form of feedback. Don't be put off if you don't get buy-in from all of the players. But remember that they've all got different learning styles. Um, And I, I guess a way I like to put this is coach the person, not the athlete. They're not robots and they will learn different ways. Um, the people on the call, as a matter of interest, I can help them to distinguish which learning style their players have. If they contact me, I can send them some information if they want to know a little bit more about learning styles. Uh, number nine, or sorry, number eight here, be prepared. One of the things that I, uh, I guess I always use the mantra, be prepared that your technology will fail when you least want it to. Uh, that's just the reality of technology. Despite your very best intentions and the progress that we've made in technology, sometimes it will let you down. Have a backup plan. Have plan B. Have plan C. Make sure that if your video analysis session doesn't work the exact way you want it to, you've got a plan that you can fall back on straight away. And it's key that you have that anyway. And make sure that you've got a checklist of the things that you need. Do you need a camera, a tripod, a laptop? Have you got them all? Are they all together? Uh, and number nine, this is you know really important, and, and I'm sure the coaches out there already know this, John O and Lenny, always be learning. Go to blogs, go to conferences, read some books, contact people who are doing video analysis well, and always be learning what they're doing and how they're doing it. So 
I'll uh, I'll take you guys off mute now and I'll pause just to see if you've got any questions. So David, Lenny, Simon, you guys are all off mute and uh, happy to happy to answer any questions you might have about that slide. Yeah, Glenn, that's, uh, yeah, John Over. Just on the um, you talked about uh, uh, the feedback to the play, playing group, and, and I suppose I, I think back to sometimes we've used the old paralysis by analysis, you know, just too much. Uh, in your experience, have you, have you come across the uh, the perfect length of time that you know as a group certainly you can do longer um, feedback with a one on one, uh, especially with your athlete or your player. But the, a timeline for your presentation to a group, do you find it gets to a point where the players tend to switch off or they just tend to like to look at themselves off on the screen rather than uh, getting value from that particular session? Yeah, John, oh, it's a great question. And the, the thing that's even more important with that question is that the landscape's continuing to change. I find that the, the new generation of player wants even less. Um, they're even less able to absorb information in big chunks of time. I would think that you never want to spend more than about 25 minutes with the group. And if you're local footy and, and you've only got them twice a week or once a week for an hour, you want to probably limit it to five or ten minutes, go through three or four key things from the game that's just happened. And once you've done that, you then um, you, you get the group back. The thing that I always talk about is that five minutes that you have with those guys, that five minutes will probably give you an hour worth of extra value in your actual training time. So the five minutes is worthwhile, the 10 minutes is worthwhile, but you don't want to keep them in long meetings. The, the players aren't there to listen for hours. They're there to, uh, they're there to train, right? <laughs> yep. Does that help? No, good answer. Thank you. Yeah, very good. Thanks. Very good. Cool. Lenny, did you, are you call? Cool? Should I move along? Move along, mate. I'm very happy with that. Beautiful. So what I want to look at now are the main phases in any video analysis. And, and these are whether you've got a software program like ours, whether or not you're trying to do it for free, which, you know, you can do a lot of this stuff, you know, on your own. The five main phases always are, first of all, to capture the information. Secondly, to watch it and review it. So not just to watch it, but to watch with purpose and review it, to analyse what's going on, whether it's a game or individual skills. And then you've got some options. It's to save it, to present to the group if you want to do that, or to share it off to the group if you want to go that way. And then right at the end, give feedback to accelerate the learning of your players. And that fifth step is where all of the information that the coaches have gathered over years of... Uh, information gathering, all of that experience that they've got, that's where it comes in. You gather the information, you use all your coaching tools and you give it back to accelerate the learning of the group. Um, I won't spend too much time here. This is a little bit more about Dartfish. Look, it, suffice to say that we're the number one video analysis provider in the world. Um, that second stat there, 40% of the, the, the medals won at the last Olympic Games were won by Dartfish users, but let me move along. Uh, worldwide groups that work with us, people can go back and watch this and have a look at those, but I want to move along. I'm really curious to look at who uses Dartfish and then to get on to uh, unlocking the brain of Simon Goosey. So in AFL circles, we've got AFL clubs, all of the state leagues, the TAC Cup, and the TAC Cup use us as their provider for, uh, for storage of games as well. Amateur footy, country seniors, metropolitan seniors, and under-18s all the way through to under-9s. So I don't think there's a lot or any group really that's not somehow being influenced by video analysis now. It's really just up to the coach to, to be prepared to jump in and have a go. Yeah, just for, um, for getting in on that, Glenn, the, um, to capture the video, which was going back to your first point, what's actually needed by um, clubs? And certainly I'm coming speaking from the amateur level or the community level as we have here in WA. I believe that not a lot of clubs use it at all. And I was just wondering, what, what is the actual basic equipment that you need to uh, set it up at your, at your local community level? Yeah, David, great question. Look, it, it's become so easy now... There's new cameras on the market, or they're not that new now. They're called hard drive cameras. And basically, it's a, it, and for those that don't know, 
it's a camera that has a little hard drive in it just like your computer has a hard drive now these cameras cost about 300 bucks if you get one of those and a tripod you've got everything that you need to start being a video analyst and to start analog you know really start to make an impact with your players and if you and I know a lot of people on here they, they won't they won't, might not have budget for, for getting video analysis software although I am going to show them a way they can do that but um, if you've got that camera on a tripod David and you and you then capture it into your computer you can use YouTube to share the video amongst your players for free you could play it directly through your television in the club rooms to show the players the game and even if you do that you're starting to cater to the visual learning style and you know you're starting to be able to make a difference to your players so you can do you can start for as little as 300 bucks mate very very simple isn't it Thanks. absolutely and and I would anticipate that in any club there will be at least one person that will have one of those hard drive cameras that would be prepared to you know to share it with you and the other great advantage Jono you can often have that that person around a club who really wants to help but you might not be able to channel them the right way. And I guess you know, the coaches Absolutely, on the call will yeah. know what I'm talking about here. That person yeah. can be great behind the camera for you. Yep. Cool. No, I t certainly agree with that. It's always those sort of people uh, hanging around your club. Now, mate, I'm really excited by the fact that we've got uh, Simon Goosey on the call. And Goose, I'm just going to take you off mute. I want, to, uh, I want to do a quick introduction to Simon because uh, he's a pretty special kind of player. Um, the stats on screen speak for themselves and I, I'll get the viewers probably just to pause the video here that they're looking at and have a look at these because the man that we're about to talk to, and I know you'll get embarrassed about this, but the man we're about to talk to is one of the absolute greats of, uh, of footy as a, as a forward and he's now paving out a career as a coach in the VFL uh, and has coached at AFL level with kicking. So, Goose, I know you're probably a bit embarrassed about the intro, so I'll keep it brief, but uh, Simon, how are you? Yeah, good, thanks, Steve. Mate, thank you so much for coming on the call. I really appreciate it. What I wanted to do, uh, Goose, if I could, is I want to just ask you a couple of questions with regard to what you've done. Uh, there we go. Uh, a couple of questions with regard to what you do with video analysis, a little bit about where you've started with it and how you see it really impacting the players. So um, I'll give you, if you, if you want to, you know, maybe answer a bit of that and tell the people on the call a little bit about yeah. your journey. No worries. Um, how it started was back uh, back at local football and we didn't have anyone videoing the game. So we, I actually contacted you and you organised a fellow to video it and, and we actually paid you some money and then on the Monday morning what I got was um, inside 50s, their inside 50s, stoppages, um, just the basics so that the DVD was all broken down yep. and I could go through it and then I went through it with the playing group Good. Um, and it was a really good tool especially from the local point of view and that was a fair while ago, so we we're probably ahead of our time. You were. It, Goose, I'll pause you there for a second. Yeah. Just to just to let all the listeners know. So so for everyone on the call, Simon was coaching at Mornington at this stage, uh, in the um, the Southern Football League. What? And and yeah. and what 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 Goose used to ask me for each week was all of those things you just listed, and I would use the I'd use video analysis software to cut them up, and then create a DVD and and shoot them off to Simon on the Monday, or or he'd come and collect them or whatever, and and um, you know I guess to a degree that was a little business I had going on right back in the early days. What I'm curious about Goose, if you could tell me. Why was it those things? Talk me through. What, 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 the things you got me to cut up, why were they important? Well, it was important for the group to have a look, especially the midfielders with the stoppages, because, you know, back then, and I, I still think you, you watch local footy and the ruckman just comes up and hits it, you didn't really have a plan. So it was really good to see, one, how the opposition set up, because we made sure we did at least six games and... You know, roughly with the sides that we're going to play in the finals. Yep. Um, and it was good for the players to buy in to set up around the stoppages. 
because you get so many opportunities in a, in a game of football to win the, win the ball. And I'm curious, Goose, the inside 50s, because I, I never really, and I know a lot of them were going to you at full forward, and I often wondered whether that was why, but uh, just being joking. Yeah, not to make a highlight of myself. No. <laughs> <laughs> why the inside 50s, Goose? What were you looking for there? Well, it was important to see how the forwards separated. Like, and when the forwards have a look at themselves, they can see if they're, they're playing their role, you know, separating and just just playing their role. And even so much where the ball's coming out if you're working hard enough. Yeah. And a lot of players, when they look at the TV and when they see themselves, they know what they're doing. You can tell them time and time again you're not pushing or you're not separating. But when they actually see themselves, it makes a big difference. Yeah, hundred percent. Well, a lot of, and I'm going to talk about this a little bit later on, Goose. But, but we generally have a really bad perception of what's actually going on outside to us. So the video gives you a much better understanding of of, of exactly what you're doing. You're right. Oh, mate, never further from the truth. Because even when I was uh, doing goal kicking at Hawthorne, there was one player that, and we had lines drawn on the ground, so you'd think you'd be able to um, run in straight. And he stepped aside every time he kicked it. And I told him, and it, he didn't realise he was doing it until we went actually on the video. So this is actually videoing video, the technique of goal kicking? Yeah, from behind. And he didn't realise he was stepping across. And no matter how many times I told him, I said, mate, he's stepping off. And he tried to rectify it. And it wasn't until we showed him on the video that he, he realised he was doing it. Yeah, beautiful. Goose, tell me what you do now with video analysis because it'd be fair to say that, that you, well, you've now got your own program and you probably weren't the most computer literate coach at that time. No. <laughs> to, to tell me where you've taken it to and, and what you're doing now at, uh, at, uh, at Frankston. Yeah, obviously now what, what happens is uh, we have someone doing the stats and then what happens, you load the game up and the stats together so you can combine them. And then I go through the game on the Monday and I do what we did well and what we could do different, not what we've done wrong, but what we could do different. Yeah, good. And then the players also give me their sticks and I load their game up on them. Good. So we probably go through a review on a Monday night, a 20-minute review. Ah, so... And I try and, try and get the players to go through with some different coaches so for Jono's question later, Goose, that I guess you heard, do you think that sort of 20 minutes is about the perfect time to have your group in and do the group video? Yeah, yeah, I do, because um, yeah, otherwise you're taking up too much time. And yep. I, I know I've got a lot more time now than I did at local football, but yep. yeah, 20 minutes, because sometimes in the midfield, we'll go through the stoppages with the midfield coach, and then also... They might go through the individual game, so you don't want to take up too much time. Yeah, good. And the players get an opportunity to take their own game, all their involvements, and they can go and look at that whenever they want. Yeah, yeah, I'll give it to them um, every Wednesday so they can go home and have a look at their own game, which is, you know, a lot of players give me the feedback too that, you know, it really helps them. Beautiful. Tell me, Goose, do you ever use it for scouting? Do you record opposition on ballers or...? Yeah, yeah, we do when we go through the opposition. Yep. Um, yeah, definitely. Yeah, good. Definitely. So we've got some of that coming up, and we're yeah, having a good look at them. Yeah, good. So there's a lot of there's a big scouting component there too, because I know in local footy the big change I've seen with the guys I'm working with is they're now videoing. They're then you know, and I know you used to video say the top four or five teams. They're now videoing when the top teams play each other to see how one team broke another team down, so it's uh, it's sort of moved on a level. Oh, yeah, definitely. Definitely. If you can get that, um, I suppose, edge on the other team, it's well worth it. Yeah, absolutely. Simon, I'll ask David and Lenny whether they've got any questions for you, because uh, I, I think you boys are still on the call, so I'll, I'll give you a chance to ask Simon a question. David, I'll start with you. Did you have any questions to elaborate on that with Goose? Um, I suppose from Goose's point of view that the fact that uh, he's coaching such a young side, do you think, uh, Goose, that the uh, use of the video analysis is uh, actually, um, you know, uh, 
teaching the players to, to learn quicker? Do you find yourself that their um, their education is accelerating uh, with the use of the video uh, analysis rather than just the standard coaching out on the oil? Oh, no, definitely. Definitely, because we, we also do behind the goals, so it's pretty important to show you know, they're running and pushing when they haven't got the ball. Yep. Excellent. And Lenny, if you... Uh, did you have anything to add on that? Probably the only question I've got is where do you normally put the camera uh, during the games? Are you, uh, do you put it centre of field or do you put it behind the goals, as you, I think you just mentioned? Well, and you do just one ca lucky. camera or two? One at the centre and one behind the goals. Oh, so you have both, Goose? Yeah, yeah, um, we can get both, which is really yep. good from, I suppose, from a learning perspective. The one behind the goals is very important when you haven't got the ball. You see the running patterns. Yeah, beautiful. It's, it's really good. It's a really good tool. Yeah, and again, mm -hmm. easy and, enough to set up. Yeah, and, and it's probably sorry. the easiest place to video the game from because there's not too much. It's just a bit of sideways. Yeah. Yep. And it's, it depends what you want to teach the boys too. Um, if it's your running patterns, and if you're pressing or, or you know, your defensive mechanisms, well, you know, it's pretty important to put the one behind the guys. Lenny, any any other questions? Are you good? Uh, the, but the only other thing, and I just picked it up as uh, Goose was talking, was uh, when you do the... Um, uh, you sit down and you review it with the, the groups. Do you do it as a, the whole team, or do you break the team down into your, your lines? You know, midfields, backs, forwards, and uh, do it separately. No, we do the review with the whole team. What we could do better and what we did well, and then they do one with the lines too. Okay. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah, that, that's it from me. Well, you know, that that might be done on a Wednesday. Like my midfield coach, I think he did his on a Wednesday. We did it. Our review on the Monday, then um, show them a few things on the Wednesday. And Goose, back in the just, and I guess the last question: When you were at Mornington and you were getting your inside fifties, you were getting the stoppages. Did you separate the boys and get them to watch different? You know, did, did they just watch the bit that was appropriate to them, or did all the players watch everything? I guess back when you would, you, you really only had yourself, not a whole range of other coaches to help out. Yeah, no, we we definitely went through it all together. All together, yeah, beautiful. Simon, because I, I think okay. it was important too for the, the whole side to learn. Yeah, and I guess again with a young side, right? If you had 18s or 19s or 16s, that that would definitely be the way you'd go too, because they could all end up anywhere, right? Yeah, look, uh, my son's um, under 15 side. Last year, I actually did a bit with them too, to help the coach out and did a bit of uh, video for them. Yep. Yeah. Well done. Simon, anything, I guess the, the, the big question for me, if there's a whole lot of coaches out there listening to this call, do you have any final kind of words with regard to if they're thinking about making the, the move into video, you know, just any final words with regard to how it's helped you or, you know, something you might want to add? I think probably the majority of the football is learned through visual and it's really important, no matter if you're going to teach them an individual skill, whether it's kicking, well, especially as a, a young player, if you can video video on kicking, that's really important. Yep. And you know, you know, I suppose you know the important things in kicking is the old ball drop. You know, probably one of the most important. And kids don't realise unless they're not looking at themselves um, on the video. Yeah, beautiful. Goose, on behalf of uh, everyone that's on the call listening, I want to thank you very much for uh, giving up your time and, and having a chat with us. I will, uh, I'll, I'll let you head off now. I know that you're busy preparing for this week's game and uh, wish you well. I'm actually reviewing, I'm actually reviewing now. Ah, uh, there we go. And I'll, uh, well, I'll let you go back, get back to that. Thank you in advance for your time, mate, and, uh, and the best of luck for, uh, for the rest of the season with your young, young blokes. No worries. Cheers, Goose. Thanks, mate. Thanks, Thanks Goose. All right. So, Lenny, I guess we're, and, and Jono, we're now at a stage in this presentation where I want to go to the next level and, and give all of the guys on the call an idea about what's available. So, this is now, okay, if we decide we're going to go down the video analysis route, what can we do? So, 
the rest of the call, that's where I want to direct it. And uh, any questions, as always, please feel free to jump in. So this is an over. I, I created a, a really basic overview of what happens with video analysis. And you'll see across the top here, these are the coach's general goals. Individual skill development, advanced scouting and game strategies, scouting and recruiting, player development, rehab, depending on the level, testing and screening, camps and clinics. And everyone from under nines all the way through to AFL will fit in somewhere and need one or all of those things. The answers are simple with regard to the four. You've got technical analysis for individuals, technical analysis for teams, the sharing and the exchange of information, and you've got data analysis if required for testing, screening, camps and clinics, which is definitely a big part of what happens at the AFL level. Um, and with regard to tool sets, that's more about the, the kinds of software, but suffice to say that all of those options are possible and available um, with Dartfish. Now, if I go back a step, if we look at that basic analogy, a picture tells a thousand words, the question that I always have for coaches is imagine the power of 50 pitches a second, which is what's happening with video analysis. 65% at least of the learners that are at your club at the moment are visual learners. History tells us that in a sport like footy, um, because of the nature of the people that play, that percentage is actually higher. Okay, so it's probably more like 70 to 75. That 75% 75 of your athletes right now are visual learners. And my question for all of the coaches to ask themselves right now is, how much are you doing to cater for that visual learning? Yeah, Glenn, if I could just jump in there. Yeah. I mean, obviously my history goes back at nearly 20 years as a coach. I would have to say that, um, that that's quite a, an interesting figure that you've just put up because um, I've <laughs> certainly coached at the waffle level where video analysis is, is quite um, uh, well used, as you've pointed out earlier. But certainly uh, at the lower levels, uh, community levels, um, it just doesn't get utilised, certainly in Western Australia, uh, more so than maybe Victoria. And we go about the old ways of just uh, coaching our players and working through our drills at training, yet that, to me, uh, doesn't actually uh, go with the, with the stats that you've put up. And that would uh, indicate that maybe we aren't doing it the right way. 70% uh, of our athletes are visual learners and we, uh, we don't have the opportunity to put something up in front of them we, we may be doing ourselves a disservice as coaches by not providing the, uh, the, the right um, uh, education session for our athletes. Yeah, Jono, I think you're exactly right. And it's probably the biggest mistake that I see coaches make. And, and don't get me wrong, every coach out there is trying to do the best thing they can for their players and their athletes. But the, the reality of being out there on a Tuesday or a Thursday night and spending your whole time talking... That's not the way that, you know, especially the new group of kids that are coming through, that's not the way they learn. They learn by seeing. So, yeah, you're 100% you're right. And the, the way I always look at this, and, and life in general, is you look at the best possible example in the world of anything, whether it's your business, whether it's a relationship, whether it's coaching. You look at the best and you, and you ask yourself the question, what can I do that they're doing? that I'm not doing at the moment. And all of the elite level coaches are using video. You've just heard Simon talk about what he's doing with video. It, it, it's the way to become better at this. Well, where I see it, I suppose, and I wanted to maybe put it out to our, our, our listeners out there as well, is the fact that at community level, and I certainly know where I am at the A grade amateur level of the last couple of years, is that you have your players for three hours a week. That's all you have them for. And if you could actually, and I think you brought it up earlier in the in the in the um, in our webinar, is that if you can accelerate that learning, um, you know, five minutes of uh, video analysis will almost give you an hour's worth of training. That seems like a very um, you know a positive tool to use because you may be able to accelerate and do more 
with the, the limited time that you do have. Yeah, you, you're exactly right, Jono. And the the thing that I, um, I guess the thing that I always go back to is that you're a coach and the coach, the coach's role is to teach. And I see a lot of coaches who don't coach. I see a lot of coaches who just manage and they create a drill, you know, and, and they'll create drills or they'll manage a training session. But, but what are they teaching their players? Are they actually teaching their players to kick? Are they teaching their players body position? Are they teaching them to tackle properly? And um, to me, that's the exciting thing about coaching. Every coaching session, mm. what have I taught my guys? Exactly. Yeah. What I can say based on that is, I suppose, I used my experience a couple of years ago. I was uh, fortunate enough to work with US footy, uh, which is teaching um, young American kids who probably only seen a game of footy once on television, uh, try to teach them how to play and teach them here. And what I found was the, the use of the video analysis for the kicking was by far the greatest accelerant for what we were doing. You know, the first time I went about it, I was new and it was quite interesting to teach people who have never grown up with football, never seen one, never felt one, and then trying to teach them how to kick. And um, when I first went through it, I did it out on the oval and we went through it over and over again. But when I started videoing each player uh, and then going through it with them from the side, from the back, from the front, um, their, their rate of learning uh, just went uh, went through the roof. And, you know, one young fellow who came out here actually ended up going back to America and ended up played in the All-American side, you know, uh, just by... Uh, you know, spending a couple of weeks out here and uh, actually seeing it up on the screen. So it certainly is a very valuable tool. Yeah, uh, look, if, if I could, I'll take 20 seconds or a minute and tell you a story. My real passion for this developed when I was, I, I went to a state under 17s um, training session, had video there, and this is for cricket. And I believed at the time that my bowling action was just like Dennis Lilly's. You know, I even had to wipe away the brow with the index finger, and I thought that I had this beautiful rhythmic bowling action. Now, I saw the video of myself, and I almost threw up John Owen Lenny, because I actually have an action very similar to Sean Tate. Now, now, if you if you imagine the two of those side by side, they're, they're poles apart, right? But until I saw myself, Absolutely. I had no idea. And and being a young man mm. who uh, who believed. He was probably more accurate than most of his coaches. I didn't listen to a lot of what was said to me until I saw the video and then the light bulb switched on for me. Exactly. Probably says a little bit about me as a learner as well, but uh, you get the idea. Um, yes, I do. So with regard to imagery, imagery is normal. People and animals all learn by copying and by using visual cues. Uh, monkey see, monkey do, as, uh, as you see. And, and you've given a great example, John, of what happened with, uh, with the American kids. The reality of our vision, though, is that it can't resolve motion that is too fast. And that's where video and film help because they allow you to be able to view video and break it down. The reality is that film is just a whole lot of individual images. This video that we're about to have a look at here is uh, it's just a whole lot of uh, individual images. And you might or might not see that, actually. That's all right. We can slip back to it later on. Um, this is how the video actually looks. So there's video there of Nick Davis, and this is actually what happens when we break the video down. And you can see you've got the ability to go through all the key components of the skill. And we start to get over the limitations of vision. Now, as a coach, I ch and I, I challenge a lot of coaches, when you see a kid kick once, or you see a kid kicking in real life, can you see everything that's potentially going wrong? And that's the, the limitation of our vision is that we simply can't. But this allows you to be able to do that. Imitation works well when the motion's not too fast. When it is fast, we need to slow it down. We need to analyse it by pulling it apart. If we want to really create learning and a loop of learning, and then we put it back together so that we can see the whole motion. Correcting motion errors normally occurs by doing these things. Assessment of the motion by the coach, acceptance by the athlete that something is wrong, and this is key, and that's where video comes in beautifully, especially if you've coached young men. Spatial awareness with all of us is generally poor. Our normal awareness is okay. So, for example, eating. We're able to find our mouth with our spoon, right? That's a, a pretty basic normal awareness of a spatial task. 
but it's a lot more difficult to be able to kick a football while dodging a Jake King tackle, for example. And I'm an Essendon supporter, and I saw Saturday night, so that sprung to mind for me. So as a coach, one of your real keys is having to prove to your athlete that something is actually happening incorrectly. And that's one of the keys in the learning loop. The dilemma that you've got, and Jono, you brought this out for me earlier, changing a complex motion for better or worse usually causes a poor initial performance, and all the coaches on the call need to understand this. The changes require a re-timing of the motor program, and that usually takes two to three weeks. Okay, you need to rewire the brain. Now, I'm not sure how we're going to go here, but I'm hoping that this video will play. I want the callers on, to, uh, on the call to have a look at this. This is what can happen when you get paralysis by analysis. Now, let me just see. Boys, can you all see that video, by the way? Yeah, we can. Yeah. Yep. Yep. This is paralysis by analysis. Imagine following this guy around for 18 holes. <laughs> Yeah, you should have hit the ball by now. <laughs> and, and what you've got there is an example of someone who's just who's thinking about too much. And, and there can be paralysis by analysis if you're giving too much information. I like to work in threes as a coach. Work in threes, give them three key points, no more, that they're able to work on. And if they're complex points, one at a time and change one at a time. If, if we're looking at kicking, for example... The thing I find that most coaches work with is ball drop, ball guide, contact follow through, and you saw Goose before run up. Work on the one that's going to make the biggest difference first. A lot of times in kicking, that tends to be the ball drop. But uh, and I, and I, you know, I, I guess the the call is not so much to teach the coaches that because I'm sure most of your guys are aware of that. So the athletes needs yep. to they need to understand the process. They if they show improvement, it can create a belief that they're doing the right thing. Even though they're kicking poor, if, they, if their technique is improving, you can teach them that they're on the right track. And that will instantly result in more motivation, more practice, and they'll return for more sessions. And that creates a cycle where they have to get better. Video. Yeah, I've certainly found in my um, experience that certainly um, using the video does actually motivate the player. Uh, because he actually then can see it. And certainly when you break it down in those slides, I think they're very, very important. And I suppose that um, my, my thing to you, with, certainly with Darkfish, Glenn, is that it's so much more than just stats and video, isn't it? Yeah, 100% more than stats and video. We, we are, more than anything, a, 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 a discrete skill video analysis software. And what I mean by that is being able to just video uh, an action of a kid kicking. So, for example... Um, the screen that you can see here, being able to have a video of, of someone kicking and be able to break that down. And at the moment, you can see I'm just taking that video through frame by frame. And yeah. you can allow a kid to see what's going on. It's very simple to go a step further than that and do something like a, um, like a split screen where what you then end up doing... And we've got Nick Davis here on the right-hand side. You've got the ability of being able to compare your athletes side by side with an elite example. So, you know, you can see here we've got Nick and I've got this young fella, Brett. And I'm able to take them through frame by frame and, and point out for the kid the things that are going wrong. Actually, Lenny and David, what I'll do while I've got you here, let's do a, spot, let's do a little spot test. I'll actually overlay these two. And uh, I'll ask you, what is it that, uh, what are the things that you would find here that you might want to work on with our with our young fella? So, I'll, I'll... Well, from from my point of view, the first thing I can see is that um, the Nick Davis uh, head to heel, the rear heel of his uh, lead foot or his planted foot is um, is so much closer to his uh, to his head alignment. Yes. I think the other kid is uh, probably stretching out a little bit far. Yeah. So that would tell me that the, the young kid's trying to kick it way too hard um, and he's actually striding out. He's not getting himself uh, perfectly balanced. So uh, I, I look at that as certainly, you see the angle there, and I think you've just drawn it on the screen, that where his, where his foot is compared to where his head is, whereas Nick's certainly a little bit more forward. Yep. Uh, certainly a little, looks a little bit more balanced. 
Um, you know, you can see that young kid's got his arm up, his, uh, his balance arm, which is good. Yep. Um, yeah, so I, I could see a few things from that that would certainly help me when I'm coaching a young kid. You know, his uh, cadence is OK. His uh, what we call leg snap, I suppose, it's his, of his kicking leg. Yeah. His both, you see that there. It's almost the same as Nick's, which is very good. Yep. Um, yeah, so I would just point out to that kid is maybe that his, uh, his stride, his tooth, um, is, uh, is a little bit long. He's, uh, he want to get his head a little bit further forward. Um, but no, it's, it's a great tool. I can see great benefit in that. Yeah. You know, it's something that I haven't seen. This is the first time I've actually seen this software. So that's, uh, that's very good. We are, and I think that it's, it's so nice to have you on the call, David, to be able to go through because there's some stuff there that I haven't picked out. This kid that you're looking at as a matter of interest, this was a year nine kid. This was an assignment he did. And he actually came mm-hmm. back with the point that almost all of the mechanical issues he's faced with all stem from this point here. Look at his ball drop height. Yeah, well, that, it's certainly the ball drop is way too high. Yeah. I was just looking at a couple of other things there, but yeah. uh, certainly if you go through and study it, yeah, um, it is it is too high, and you can see that the ball is starting to turn yep. um, as it's leaving his hand, just uh, right on that uh, picture that we see now. Yep. Um, and the ball, uh, yeah, it's, the drop is probably uh, is not great. You can see the ball change angles quite considerably as it drops, yeah. and uh, that's something that coaches can certainly work on. Beautiful. And one of the things that, that, that this software can allow you to do is you can, you can take the time, video all your players. And one of the things I found really, you know, I guess, more useful than anything, uh, John O, was being able to have the group all watch each other kick and know each other's faults and what to look for. So suddenly you've got 40 coaches all running around. And as long as they've all got the okay, yeah. same message... It works wonderfully well. And I'll, I'll, I'll emphasise that. As long as what they've all got the same cool. message, mm. yeah. Um, where were we? So let's just go back here. A couple of little things to go through. So um, video now, it, it's very accessible, nice and easy to be able to use. Coaches have always used uh, cameras with com- or, or at elite level used cameras with computers for about 10 years. Hard drive cameras have changed the landscape. We mentioned that earlier. It makes it very simple to use. The advantages of having a computer, you can get a library of the football's history. It was so easy for me there to get my software, pull out this kid and just pull the video up and that's the beauty of having you know computers involved now. You, yeah, you... I think it's a, it's a far different. I, I'm going to say when I first started in the Waffle, I coached at the Perth Football Club and I had guys like Buddy Franklin and Sherrod Wellingham and all these guys playing for me and um, we used to actually use, and when we did their video, where we actually did it with video actually the old VCR. Aha, yes. We had to have two, v- two VCRs put next to each other. We'd be recording and cutting. It was such a long, long-winded process. Yep. And I found as a Colts coach, and I had a, a job which you know, required me to be at work 40 hours a week, and I was probably spending 40 to 45 hours actually coaching the football because of the length of time it used to take to use, you know, cut from the old VCR back to another VCR and we give the playing group that. So it certainly has come a long way and time is very, very important for coaches. Absolutely. And and I can see this just being an absolutely fantastic tool to to limit that time, but to use the time that uh, you create with it uh, very, very purposefully. And and I take my hat off to you, mate, because I've been there and that was a long way to go around doing things, wasn't it? The old tape to tape on the VCR. It certainly was. Um. Dartfish, and I wanted to just pause. We've had a chat with Goose, which is brilliant. I've also, uh, I spoke to North Melbourne Footy Club, who use our software as well, and um, their performance analyst, a guy by the name of Ray Breed, has uh, he said that these are the things that he uses a lot in, in using Dartfish. Developing a database of training drills, which I hadn't thought about, but he does a lot of that, and... Um, he also has coaches reviewing the drills, modify them to address the skill learning, the tactical plays and the physical requirements. So how and I know Lenny talked about, you know, what adds what add on is there at the next level? Well this is what they're doing at AFL level. Looking at team tactics and plays engaging their success, which Goose talked about, modifying tactics and modifying the coaching, which is where it's all really important. Stopping just ball movement, defensive positioning, pressure, individual player feedback, which Goose is doing at VFL as well. ISO cam on selected players at each session and Dartfish allows for this ISO cam technology where you can highlight one player. Two camera capture for ball gathering and marking techniques, so using two cameras. So just to give the uh, all of the guys on the call an idea of what's happening at the AFL level. Um, and we a lot of AFL clubs work with us, but, but Ray was 
was generous enough to offer that this is their go-to stuff for dartfish. Fantastic. Um, let's go through a few basic features so and the things that you can do with video analysis. Instant feedback at training, it's one of the things that is, I think, misunderstood and not used enough. You can set up a camera with a laptop at training, say five metres away from your players. You can set up the camera, say, behind the player, have them kick, run around. You have the camera on a 10 or 20 second delay. The player kicks. They get the feedback that's a result of what their outcome is. So they see whether they've kicked a goal or hit a target. Mm -hmm. They can get some auditory feedback from you as they walk past. And then they can look at the laptop and instantly get visual feedback on, it, on this delay of what it was that they'd just done. So you've got this perfect loop of learning. And you, once you set the camera up and you hit the hit, put the laptop on, you don't have to do anything else for the session. As long as you've got a good battery life, it'll all just run itself. Yeah, so that's that's an option. Yeah, fantastic. Side-by-side uh, -side comparisons, which, of course, we just had a little bit of a look at there and the ability to look side-by-side -side at your players versus elite athletes. There's a lot of buy-in from the players when you do that, so I quite like it. You've also got the ability to create strobed images, a little bit more advanced, but um, you know that possibility is there also. Superimposing images, one on top of the other, which we've just had a look at. So being able to see your players, again, compared to the elite, and, and Jono, the, the information you provided before for coaches, uh, a little lesson for the coaches, which is great. I like this, the ability to be able to add oral annotations to video. Now, you might only have your players for an hour or two hours or three hours, but it doesn't mean that the coaching and the learning can't still happen. You can have video of your players, add an oral annotation to it, and put it on YouTube or send it via email, and you've got the ability to be able to influence your players even when they're not with you. And that's made possible um, you know, with software like this. All kinds of Fantastic. yeah, it's and, and that's something a lot of people don't think about, John. O, but it's a it's a great way to use the video. Um, I know Port Melbourne, uh, Gary Ayres at Port Melbourne, he does a lot of that. He'll create a tape that's an um, an an auditory representation of what had happened over the video using Dartfish, and he puts that up on a Dartfish TV channel, and the players can look at it at their leisure during the week. And that's a great yeah. way to be able to impact your players if you haven't got them full time. And I oh, look, certainly with the growth of social media nowadays, it's certainly, uh, and it's very accepted amongst the younger generation, it's, um, it certainly is a, is a huge benefit. Yeah, and that's what, that's what I do the most with my cricket. It, with most of the cricket coaching I do, and all of the one-off sessions I'll do as a kicking coach, I'll go off, shoot all the video, put it together, put it online, and the players look at it in their own time. And then we don't spend any time in the night doing it. It's just uh, I, I cut it up, do it later. So... A lot of options there for the coaches. Let me quickly go through what can happen with tagging. I know Goose covered this briefly. You've got the ability to capture and break down your game live or afterwards. You can customise tagging panels, create stats on any part of the game. You can print stats live on game day and actually have them there with you to show the players at quarter time, half time, three quarter time. And, and especially if they've got big KPIs. You can create highlight packages for your players, which, again, Simon talked about that he does a lot of. Use it to present the KPIs on Tuesdays in the 20-minute meeting to the players. Use them at training for set plays and for live video on delay. Create individual stats that you need is something that we're able to do uh, at Dartfish. This is what a tagging panel looks like in Dartfish. So these are all the events that have happened. Here's the game. This is the panel itself. And you hit a, you hit a button at a certain time in the game and it gives you the event. And uh, we'll have a look at that a bit later on. I've got a free application for everyone on the call. If they go, and if you've got an iPhone in particular, if you go to the app shop and you type in Dartfish, there's a free app for you to be able to do some video analysis. So um, just that's a, a gift that I've, I, I've got for all the guys on the call, Lenny and, uh, and David, just so that your guys are here. So they can instantly have some free video analysis uh, on their iPhone. And if you haven't got an iPhone, but you've got a smartphone, an Android kind of phone, uh, we've still got the app for you guys as well. So a bit of a gift for you for, for listening through. Media books, 
this is another thing that is possible. And this is where I want coaches to just think a little laterally. laterally. The question I get more than anything is money. How can we afford the, the cost of the software? And for those guys that are on the call, just to let you know, you can start doing video analysis, full game analysis for two and a half thousand dollars. Now, in the co in, in the levels where I look at, there could be upwards of 150 players that are all going to benefit from this video analysis. Why not put a levy on the players as a once-off of 10 or 12 or 15 bucks, and you pay for it that way? There's one way. Well, Glenn, Glenn, I'd like to think that it's. Uh you know that we you you, you said about expe uh, thinking laterally. That's th that's the key here. The bottom line is it's it's the time also that you invest. And if this can cut down that time, I, I um, had a, a talk with some of my players only a few weeks ago, and they said, "Oh, look, I only want two minutes of your time, you know, to, to talk about my game." But then I thought to myself, "Well, my actually senior squad was 62 players. <laughs> yes. If I gave them all two minutes of my time, that's over two and a bit hours out of three hours that I would spend talking to the playing group." And um, that's just time that you can't you can't afford. And for such a small outlay, what you could achieve um, based around that 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 is that is worth gold, I think. And um, I think that's how you've got to look at it. You've got to look at it uh, holistically. And the bottom line is that your time is key. Your time is money. And um, at the moment, you would be doing yourself a disservice if you um, you know if you didn't get to all your players. And I think of what you've talked about using social media sites, etc how you can get to your players in such a quick time without actually eating into your training time is uh, is by far worth the investment. What a fantastic tool. Yeah. Jono, the other thing that I found a lot of clubs have started to do, and this is where it gets very funky, we've got a, a little part of the, the Dartfish software where you can create what's called a media book. Now, the media book is a little file with a video, and here's a screenshot of one, with a video, with a title, and with these little key positions that explain different pieces of information. Now, the way I've seen this used, which I just love, is coaches will and clubs will sell this little logo here as advertising space. So just say you've got your local Dan Murphy's or you've got a video store as your main sponsor. You put their logo on here, you video all of the players, and you give them the video on this media book, and you know, suddenly there's a lot of exposure. Or alternatively, you, you go into the local school. And this is where I want everyone to just listen to this as an idea. You go into your local school and you run a clinic. And you video all of the year 10 kids, let's say. All the year 9 kids. Or a primary school, wherever you want to go. You video all the kids and you give them a video back, one of these media books, of them kicking. Individually, you give them back. Now, it might take you a couple of hours to, to get in and run the clinic and another hour or so to put the media book together. But two things happen. Number one, you're representing your footy club in that school and you're building a connection. Number two, you're getting your sponsor's logo in this little media book out to 100 kids in the local neighbourhood. Now, you go back to your sponsors and you say to them, we're going to do 100 or 200 or 300 of these things in a clinic. We want you to be our major sponsor for the, the video analysis software and we're going to put your logo on it. And you then get them to pay for the video analysis. So a lot of ways you can think laterally, Jono, that we can help people with. Absolutely. Um, there's a lot of elite level, and, and Lenny had asked me, you know, what else happens at the, at the elite level? Let me quickly run through, because there's a lot of extra stuff that happens with strength and conditioning, where there's a lot of work done on techniques in running, techniques in weightlifting, techniques um, with regard to those external things that are helping players get out on the field every week, uh, techniques with rehab. Um, I won't worry about the Darfish TV site for the moment. I just want to give you a quick look at this. So these are the things that are done at the elite level. You can display data on video. It can be graphical. It can be numerical. You can use heart rate monitor feedback and put it into Dartfish. Ergonometers, pressure sensors, accelerometers, force plates. Dartfish will import all of that detail into uh, the software and you can display it just as you can see here. And again, because it's made, you know, because there's, there's elite you know, Olympic level athletes using this, it'll do everything you could ever imagine. Um, there's use of gait analysis, assessment, ACL injury preventions, orthotics, prosthetics, throwing, 
uh, recovery, performance enhancement, all these things at the elite level where video is used as well to give your coaches an idea that there's no stone left unturned at that level with regard to the other things that happen in video. Um, uh, just on that, uh, Glenn, yeah. like all software, the, obviously um, you look to update and uh, get newer versions out. How often uh, are you finding over the last, say, couple of years, because obviously technology is increasing at such a rapid rate, uh, how often has Starfish found that they, uh, they need upgrades and how are they uh, able to get to users? Um, Jono, we, we have 28 full-time programmers. So that's the guys who sit in the dark room without any windows writing our code. <laughs> very, very prolific. It, as soon as something new comes out, those guys get to work making sure they can integrate it with our software. Having said that, I cannot understand, um, I, I can't possibly imagine anyone below, let's say, the uh, state league level needing anything more than what is there right now. I, yeah, I couldn't see it from my point nah. of view, and I've coached at both levels. Yeah, I just um, couldn't see you're, it. You're, you're dead right. That's got way more than you'd ever use. Yeah, it's all there, mate. And and I guess the nice thing about that that everyone feels certain with is they're not ever going to... Well, I can't say ever because we don't know what's going to be around the corner, right? But but I can't imagine anywhere in the next five years or so where you'd need to change it. It'll do everything you need and you know, a million things more. Absolutely. Yeah, but, but rest assured... Very, very prolific. The, the guys in it, and they're Swiss, our main developers, um, you know, the, the makers of the Swatch Watch and all kinds of things that work well, uh, they're fantastic mm -hmm. at making sure we have everything that we want in our hands, um, you know, at the coalface working with the athletes. So that's the end, of, uh, the end of the slideshow. I know that we have had a little bit of a look at the way video can be used and side-by-side -side and, and, um, and looking at kicking. I want to just give you a quick look at this tagging screen, the game analysis screen, and then uh, Lenny and David, why I'm just opening this up, if, if you have any questions at all, please throw them out there. Uh, no, just a quick you. question. Sorry. Sorry, Lenny, go ahead. No, you go, John, go. I just thought, um, just wanted to know, like, say, um, Goose is one, I've certainly known Goose a long time, and um, about his computer skills and how he certainly... Uh, uh, become very uh, au fait with using this. Do you find that, uh, would you re say that it's, it's quite a, a, an easy program to use once you've, uh, once you've had a bit of a look into the system? Yeah, David, it's really intuitive. So the thing about the software is there's, there's only ever really three or four things that you want to do. Now, there's levels below that, but if we look at game analysis, for example, it, it, at its simplest form, there is a game happening. If I see something that I want to edit, I just click on a little button. So every time a player has a kick, I just click on this button. And that instantly will create for me a link over here. So it's very simple with regard to what you want to do. Um, I think that a, you know, a couple of hours of training will generally get people up and running where they're able to have a play around with it. And then like all software, it's you know just having a play. Simon, I'm sure, and I'm not sure if he's still on the call, but Simon, I'm sure, will admit that he was... Um, he was very limited in his technical ability when he started with Dartfish. Within about a month, Jono, he was calling me saying, hey, Glenn, I've, I've found this thing here in the software, and he was teaching me stuff that I didn't know about. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, well, this is it all. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and Goose, you know, and he'll freely admit, he, he was pretty low down with regard to the, the with technical you know, ability, but he's a brilliant Dartfish user now, brilliant Dartfish user. Excellent. Um, any Lenny had any questions, Lenny, from your side of things? No, I, I, I think I'll hold on to it. I think it's uh, related just to Dartfish TV, but I'll hold on to that. Cool. I, I want to give you a quick look at what happens with regard to the tagging. So, this is our tagging screen. Our tagging screen. You can see here that we've got a video that's playing. That video could be playing live, or it could be um, a replay or a video file that's been captured, you know, from a day before, a week before, or a combination of both. As you watch the game, you edit the things that are important to you. Now, this is VFL level, so there's a lot of edits that are happening. You can see that they want kicks, handballs, marks, inside 50s. They want goals, behinds, hitouts, opposition goals, behind, centre bounces, a lot of different you know, information. 
as each event occurs, all they do is click on a button and that button will then create all of these events here in what we call our event list. If I want to review any of these events, so for example, you can see that the, we've got four goals here. If I double click on this event, that event will come on screen and it'll play for me. So you can see we're just about to see uh, player number four kick a goal. Can you guys just confirm you can see that video okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Yep. So you can see here's just about to kick a goal. If I want to go to the next one, I just double click on it and it will appear as well. So obviously we've got a little bit of a play here where we've got another goal. Cool. Yeah, very good. If I wanted to search, and this is one of the things, and Darfish is a high level search engine as well once you've created these stats, I can either search via the stat itself, which is what we've just done, I can search via the player by clicking on this column here. So you can see all the players' games are, are now searched. I can click on the stoppage, the teammate, whatever it is that I want to search for. If I highlight all of these things, so let's say D Keeley here, I'm then able to export those as one video file that, that uh, the player is able to have their own video and watch. And I think Simon mentioned before, he does a lot of that with his players too. Yep. The other thing that I want to quickly show you, in this little tab here called <laughs> Search Events, I've got the ability to be able to have a statistic representation of all the events, which is kind of cool, right? So I click in here and I say, I want to just show you. I've, I created one of those media books for you to have a look at as well. So this is a live media book. So this is how it can look. You have your logo over here. You've got your analysis here. So I watched the video and you can see that we've got, I'll just turn James down. We've got James, so video of James kicking a footy. So this is that idea I said before. These are the, the coaching pieces of information. So over here in the comment box, you've got a couple of comments about James's technique. And you just give this back to the player. Now, the thing I like about this, Jono, is that you can create these comments just once and import them in for each player. Okay. So you don't, need to, you don't yep. need to type them all each time. You can import them in. Or you can create this slideshow view here and instantly get a printout that you could give to each of the kids. Oh yeah, cool, outstanding. Yeah, so that becomes you know if you, if you run the you know that um, I guess that that mini mini conference you know mini uh, uh, mini conference or, or mini I guess workshop for schools you could do that. Now, just so I want to quickly show you this, and then uh, we can pretty well wrap things up, I think. So this is a this is the statistical analysis. So obviously everything that you put in can become a stat. And what we're looking at here are the outcomes versus players or we can look at outcome versus individual actions. I can look at the players versus the outcomes. Players versus individual actions. This is the one we want. So if you have a look here, these are all the players from the game. There's all of their defensive acts, and it totals them. Here's all their handballs, here's their kicks, here's their marks. So this is your ability to have an instant printout of the stats. You can print that and put it up in the rooms. You can print it out instantly at quarter time, half time, if, you know, if you're at a, a level where you're able to get someone to get the information live. So just to give you a bit of an idea, um, you've got that, you know, that information as well. If I right-click on that, it instantly gives me an option to be able to print. Boys, any questions? Uh, no, I suppose the, the main question is uh, how do coaches get in touch with Dartfish? Uh, so the, the easiest thing for, to do is to contact me. And what I'll do, I'll actually put my details up at the end of this presentation. But uh, my email is Glenn Murdoch, Glenn with one N, Murdoch, M-U-R-D-C-O-H, at dartfish.com.au. And I will actually pop that up for you to be able to see later. And, uh, yeah, contact me via email or give me a call on my mobile, 0425 737 169, 0425 737 169. And we can have a chat about how video analysis can work in your club. 
So what I'll do as well, Glenn, is I'll put a uh, link um, or some information on the actual web page as well, so coaches will have that there for you. Wonderful. Gents, it's been fantastic having you along. Thank you so much for the opportunity to present to your coaches. Uh, I trust that we've been able to share some some really great information for them and, and I look forward to uh, to hearing the feedback and, and helping even more clubs start to use video in their in their teaching learning. Yeah, Glenn, I would just like to yeah, thank you on behalf of Coach AFL and I would encourage all coaches to uh, you know probably move with the times. And We did mention about old-fashioned coaches who won't go near it, but I think if uh, you want to stay, in li- stay alive in this game that you really need to uh, get on the front foot and... Uh, this is a fantastic tool, and we've shown today what uh, what benefit it could be, both from a, a learning point of view and also a time point of view for uh, for coaches, especially those in the community. So uh, I'd encourage people to uh, have a good think about uh, using video analysis for uh, their players, uh, not only in a game and video and stats uh, area, but also just actually uh, uh, teaching your players, uh, you know, various aspects of the game. It's been a, a fantastic presentation and. Uh, yeah, thanks again from uh, from everyone at Coach AFL. Beautiful. Thanks, Jono. Thanks, Lenny. And uh, again, thanks to Goose for helping us out with his time. And uh, I look forward to catching up with you boys uh, sometime soon. Cheers. All the very best. See you, mate.